than a time. Mem, my I've been gone dying. Yeah. He was nifty yesterday. Um, he's from Tom Moan. He was a paratrooper in Canunas. And his Mishama should have an Aliyah. Absolutely. Sometimes we see the Rufu Ashlema, sometimes we see the Nishma, huh? We don't have a choice. Right. And now you said yeah. you were going to continue Aye. Rabbi Shla. That's what you told us last week, that you're going to talk about Rabbi Schwab in Manchester? Rabbi Schwab? Rabbi, Matitia, Rabbi Matitiao Salomon. Okay, fine. Then it's no. a mistake. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But before we, you remember we, it was very tough. We learned about stealing. Yes. It was very, very tough because everybody sometimes falls into this and um, neither palm olive nor any type of soap takes away what one steals from the hand. One has to do chuva, a proper chuva, giving back, asking machila and everything. But before I turn, I cannot resist to, um, Friday is going to be Purim Katan. And Shabbos is going to be Parashat Tetzave. And there are a huge amount of connections, believe it or not, between Purim and Parashat Tetzave. One second, I close the door. And thank you. An unbelievable connection between the two. I another class called me from the last second, somebody was missing, and they said, We want a lot of people to come. Could you uh, give a funny title? Because Adar, we're not so much into funny moods. But one has to realize that it's Adar as well. So I didn't know. It. I had exactly half a minute to choose. So I said, when Achashverosh dresses up as a Kohen Gadol. So everybody was laughing, and it passed, and there were a lot of people. So what's the story? I think you know that Achashverosh was a very big paranoid, complex person. When I say complex, he had complexes, not he was a complex personality. He had complexes because he did not come from royal blood. That's why Vashti was important to him. So he was looking like, you know, like people who are nouveau riche. You know what is nouveau riche? A nouveau riche, so, yeah, new rich. He, he shows off new rich. all what he has, silver, gold, vitrine, you know what I mean? And somebody who is very rich from the past doesn't have to show anything. He feels secure. He's rich. Achashverosh was the first case. And he looked for the most fantastic throne that exists. And he found, he found out with his uh, Pakidim, with his people, that the throne of the Kise of Shlomo Melech was the most special one that ever existed. So he imitated it and it took a very long time. And therefore, he afterwards moved the capital where he reigned to the place where the throne was, which is totally crazy. You understand, instead of choosing the capital, he chose the throne and then the capital. In the same way, he looked for, says the Midrash, the most fantastic clothes that ever existed. I would have taken the clothes of a Maharaja, the clothes of a, of a dancer, he decided that the clothes of the Kohen Gadol are the most precious. He's right, because we have precious stones and everything. That's why we needed these little worms, the, the Shamir, etc., etc. So he dresses up as a Kohen Gadol. But you can't have a Midrash that says such things, and it comes from nowhere. So because we have by the Kohen Gadol when his beauty, the beauty of everything that he's wearing is mentioned, and by Achashverosh, what he shows off with 
חור, כרפס, תכלת, אחוז וחד מבוץ וארגמן, etc, etc, we have as well the world, the same world, and we know we govern it in the morning, that when there is a gzera shava, there is a connection. לכבוד ולתפארת, לכבוד ולתפארת is mentioned by both. And therefore, the midrash allows itself to say that he must have chosen to dress up as a Kohen Gadol. Okay, till here? Now, we have more connections. We have more connections. We have, for example, in the text of the Megillah, we have, uh, I'll show you, I'll show it to you. It's very, very funny. Very funny. Do you remember that after he's terribly angry because his wife did not come, And it's not just because he's a crazy guy. He wanted her to come, as you know, naked and show the world her beauty. And he wanted as well to prove that he wears the pants because he is the king, not she. When she refuses, she doesn't show her beauty. So all the people make fun because he wanted to show that he married her for her beauty and not because she's a queen. the, the great-granddaughter of Nebuchadnezzar, and as well, he wanted to show that he wears the pants. When she refuses to come, he, can't, he shows that he doesn't wear the pants and he doesn't prove her beauty. That's why he was so crazy. So he asked, when he's not drunk anymore, he asks his, his uh, people, uh, his ministers and everything, what to do about it. And the names of the people are... והקרוב אליו, כר שנה שתר עד מתה תרשיש. One of them is called תרשיש. And one of the stones of the חושן is called תרשיש. So it's really funny. And that's why, and we have another תרשיש ביונה הנביא. The city. Okay, of תרשיש. Okay? So therefore, they allow themselves to connect פרשת תצווה uh, with uh, the story of פורים. And with the Megillah. And there is another place where he says that when Haman says you should write down that uh, she should not come in front of the king anymore and, and uh, that man should be the boss at home. 2,500 years ago in Persia when you have 50 wives and when you're allowed to hit them when they don't listen. So a big chidush, right? That you have to listen to the husband. making fun of everything, okay? So it says in Pasuk Kaf of the first Perek, the Nishma Pitgam HaMelech, it will be heard that the king said that somebody who does such a thing gets killed, okay? And he proposes to be the killer, Haman, the Muchan, who at the time is a small person. The Nishma Pitgam HaMelech, in Parashat Tetzaveh, we have as well the Nishma when the Kohen Gadol, the Nishma, when he goes into the Kodesh. And those three places prove that there is a connection between the two. So I think that I once already spoke about it, but I can't resist because it's so beautiful. You know, Rav Nachman Mibreslev says that Nigun eino mekabel tum'a. A Nigun can't receive tum'a. And Nigun is always beautiful. By the way, a very strange thing. Everything was proposed at that crazy banquet. And 180 days were as big the first day as the last. That's why it says, Yamim Rabim. In case you don't know that 180 days of food is a lot, it tells you as well that it's a lot of days. Yamim Rabim. So it says, it says the Meforshim, to teach you, it all comes from Gemora Megillah. It shows you that... The first day and the last day were the same great food. We, on the last day of Yontef, we take all the leftovers and we make something nice out of it. But we don't begin throwing everything and doing again new food. He, the 180th day, was like the first, full of food and, and, and the baltashris uh, and everything. And then the people are poor and one doesn't understand why. So... Um, wait a minute, where was I just before explaining this? What did I say? Why did I say this? I lost it. Help me. Mm 
What I was just say, saying something. And Sasaba. What? The connection between Purim and Sasaba. A, a, a connection between? No, I was saying. I was. Who 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 was with me just before? Uh, I wanted to explain that. Oh, yeah, yeah, music, music, thank you. Uh, music. Uh, at the banquet of Hachashverosh, where you had everything, there was one thing that was missing. And Rav Shlomo al Kabetz, author of Lechodoidi, big Kabbalist yeah. of the time of the yeah. Arizal, of Rav Yosef Karo, etc., says that Hachashverosh was told by the specialist that music can bring a person to Ruchnius. I'm not talking about the music of nowadays. I don't mm -hmm. know why the, the dictionary calls it music. But then, oh, 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 it's not music. But music in general can bring you to, to, to unbelievable things. And he did not want the people to get back to Ruchnius. He wanted to plunge them into Gashmius. Like all the Goyim, mm -hmm. it says in Shira Shirim that when the Goyim meet the Jews, it's so beautiful. They try to tell him, come to us, we'll be nice to you. And the Jews say, you can't compete with what we have. We have the Torah and we have HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it's so beautifully written. Once if we do a few of those tzukim, you'll see. So Achashverosh did not have music at the banquet. It's very, very interesting, the concept. Whether it's exactly what it was, it's not important. But Rav Shlomo al insists on this music. So, so Rav Nachman in Breslav said music can't get uh, to me. In the same way, if you don't understand the clause of the Kohen Gadol, you remember the Tefillah of Yom Kippur? Somebody who didn't see the Kohen Gadol, never saw anything in his life, etc. Yeah, all over, it sang the, the same way. It's very, very beautiful. And, and, Therefore, there is an Indian to understand when we look at the Kohen Gadol and Bichlal at the Kohanim that we should know why so many details and so many understandings and so many lessons from a parsha which looks like it's only the parsha of a, of a dressmaker. It's not. It's a very deep parsha. Okay? Very interesting. It's, by the way, in the parashiot, of Shmois, Bamidbar, and Dvorim is the only parsha where Moshe Rabbeinu does not appear. You know this. Have you ever heard it? Yeah, yeah. You know, there is a very interesting thing. You know, Mordechai min Hatorah minayin. That's a mm -hmm. good in Chulin. Mordechai min Hatorah minayin. Esther min Hatorah minayin. Everybody knows Aster, Aster, Panay. And Haman min Hatorah minayin. And you know what the fourth one? In the same Gemara, the most bizarre thing on earth, Moishe Minatora Minayin. You agree that it's a crazy sentence? We have a question where is Moshe in the Torah? Vayomer Hashem el Moishe, Vayomer Hashem el Moishe, Vayomer Hashem el Moishe. I mean, we have 100 times Moshe. He's not in Tetzaveh, though. What? He is not in Tetzaveh. In Tetzaveh, he's not which is exactly at the same time, like Hashem doesn't appear in the Megillah. We have so many connections. He's not in Tetzaveh, but he is. The Gaon Mivilna says he is. First of all, why isn't he in, the, in Tetzaveh? Do you remember? Do you know? He said, Excellent. When Hashem said, I'm going to make you into a nation. Enough is enough. The children of Israel have become have been rebellious too much. And I'm not lying because I promised that Am Israel would always exist. But if I take you, your part of Am Israel, I'll make you bigger, broader, wider, and you'll be Am Israel. But the rest of Am Israel, I don't want them. Moshe Rabbeinu said, no, no, I love them too much. You have to do with the 12 tribe. You have to do the whole of Am Israel. And if not, then I prefer that you raise me from your book. Now it's a very dangerous thing to say because it could be a little bit as if you don't realize the value of being in the Torah. Yehuda, to save Binyamin, is ready to give up his oil and habo. 
He paid for it a very expensive price. It took a very long time till he was accepted in Olamaba. Because if you say, I'm ready to give it up, on one hand, it's Mr. Ruth Nefesh. On the other hand, it's as if you don't value enough the thing. There's something that you value so much, you can't say, I'm ready to give it up. Even though it's to save Binyomin, because if not, his father will die from it. Do you understand? So one has to be very, very careful. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu said, Mechen in Amisifrecha. So he doesn't appear. Says the Gaon Mivilna. He does appear, but in a Nistar way. Again, a connection with Megillat Esther. Where Hashem is totally Nistar in the whole Megillah. Aster, what is it? Where is he appearing in a Nistar way? Do you know? Anybody? Those that have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, write in a vertical way the word Moshe, Mem Shin Hei. Write it vertically, not horizontally. And now write the letters full, Maze full, Mem. Mem, how do you write Mem? You make a Mem, no. How do you write Mem fully? Mem, Mem. Mem, Segol, Mem. Shin, Shin Yud Nun. Hey, hey Aleph. You get it? The, the, Hear visible, anything. Uh, the, vi the visible part, you got it, Rosina? Yeah, I was cut off. I got to re go on. You're freezing. So, so where, where did you stop hearing? I don't know. You were, I don't know. Like four minutes ago, I stopped. Did everybody else get cut off or it was just me? Just you, just you. Uh, okay, just so, continue, it's fine. Okay, so you take the visible part of Moshe, which is Moshe, Mem Shin Hei. You take it off because that's visible. Remains the Mem, remains the second Mem. Shin, you have Yud and Nun. You take off the three letters. You have only the hidden okay. way, the second mem, the yud and the nun, and the aleph. You got it, everybody? No. No. no, no I you didn't know it's it you missed something. Brian, are you got it? I don't have a pencil and paper with me. I'm just listening. It's all right. No, but you get what I said? Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Malka, everybody, Shoshana, everybody got it? Yeah. yeah. So it's very, very interesting. You have those three things, okay? You have the hidden part, which is Mem, which is Yud Nun, and which is Aleph. Okay. How much does, how much does it make in Gematria? Mm -hmm. 91. No, almost, almost. 40, 50, and 1 is 91. Huh? Mm -hmm. Why 90? Mem yud. Is yud is how much is Yud? 10. How much is Nun? 50. How much 60. is Mem? 40. 40, oh. right? So we are already uh. 100. And Aleph, it's 101. Oh, uh, okay. It? Yeah? Betty, you got it? 101. Yeah. You have the, the mem is 40. The yud and the nun is 60. Okay. Yud and nun. Okay, I got it. You got it. Everybody got it? Okay. 101 is the amount that the Gaon Mivilna, not me. He says 101 is the number of psukim in Parashat Vetzave. Because Akadosh Boko couldn't just ignore totally Moshe Rabin. So even in the Parsha where he is not, he is. But in the middle, Oh, very nice. Okay. That's so interesting. Now, now, I said that music can elevate a person. But when does it not elevate a person? Why do we say, for example, to kids, don't listen to Goisha music? Because we have something which is very interesting. We have a mind which is associative. And when we know the words, or when we remember that it's the music of a certain film that we saw, and we have the picture, and it's wrong, 
from the music we get to bad thoughts. And therefore it can get to ma. But when you don't know anything, then it's not tame. Because it's just a melody. And when you know about Jewish music, Jewish music from Russia was a lot from the Russian songs. And Jewish music from Yekes is Austro-Hungarian. It's a vals of Strauss and it's a this and it's a that. And Jewish music from more Arabic country. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not pure yes. Jewish, but it became Zmiras because Bo Hashem, we didn't know where it comes from. We knew the countries if we are musical, but we didn't know which kind right. of music. So when you don't know, it means it doesn't exist. If we don't understand what the clause of the Kohen Gadol, the Kohen Hediot and the Kohen Gadol refer to, it doesn't help. I look at it, it's very nice, it's very sweet, it's full of coloring, it's full of nice things, but, but so what? So buttons, so nothing. Do you understand? Therefore, there is an Indian to understand why it's mentioned with so many details in the Torah, and why there is an Indian to look at the close of the Kohen Gadol. Got it? Till here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Says the Gemara in Erchin, page Tetzain. We have two places where the close of the Kohen Gadol and the Korbanot are next to each other. Once it's Korbanot and then close, and once it's closed, and then Kohen Gadol. In two parashiot, one is Tetzave, here in Shemot, and one is in Tzav, parashat Tzav, it's very interesting, yes? Um, hello, Brenda. And one is Tzav in um, Vayikra. But now we understand why we have to know it is possible, because then we, we concentrate and we understand, like the korbanot, if you don't have any idea of what the korbanot are, so what? So an animal was shecht, that's all. But if you know, for example, that the korban ola, which is the first korban that is mentioned in Parashat Vayikra, is to erase in us the bad thoughts. And that's why it's totally burned. It makes you do tshuva. It's when you put your hands on the korban, it's because you understand what's going on. Says the Gemara in Erchin. Uh, Brenda, you just came in. Brenda. Yeah, I'm sorry, me? I was late. No, no, yes. You don't have to say sorry. I'm just explaining you that we made a lot of connections between Megillah Tetzter and Parashat Tetzave, which is this week. That's why. And Friday is um, Purim Katan, so I couldn't resist. Okay. So says the Gemara that. We have eight clothes. We have four clothes which are totally white and which are the clothes of everybody, the normal Kohen and the Kohen Gadol. And if we want to remember them by heart, the best way is not by looking inside the text because it looks a bit mixed up. There are reasons for it, but it's by getting dressed. When you get dressed, you don't forget. So the first one is the pants because a person, the first thing is the pants to cover what has to be covered. It's called Michnasain. It's like a Bermuda. It's like, you know, uh, it's not like an underwear of nowadays. It's like uh, the underwear of our grandfathers. That's how the Kohen pants looked. Okay? And it's called Michnasain. And what was it, Mechaper? Because in one part, we have Kohen, we have the Big Day Kahuna and then the Korbanot, which are an expiation. Uh, an atonement. And in the other parsha, you have first the korbanot and then the big day kuna. Each one, you know, it's in between those two things. So therefore, and you see the tzav and the tzave is even the same letters, an order from Hashem, even if we don't fully understand. So therefore, we know that the big day kuna are as well an atonement. So when you look at the kohen or the kohen godol, like it says in the Trila of Yom Kippur, somebody who didn't see the Kohen Gadol in his splendor. It's not just because it's beautiful and shiny, it's because it's for Yom Kippur, it's an atonement, okay? So the Mirnasaim are atoning. What do you think that the Mirnasaim are atoning for? Bad thoughts. Not just bad thoughts, bad things connected with, uh, with Erva. 
Okay, mm. everybody understands this. Huh? That's easy. But then what do you wear when you finish this? What's the next thing that you wear? It's What's the now? What? No, not the mitts. I don't remember. Did he you put some on it. The kutonic. Yeah, yeah. You, you you just have, you, you're naked. You just have mechanism. So the kutonic, it's like a bathrobe. It's exactly like a bathrobe. But in those days, you didn't have buttons. By the way, in a bathrobe, usually we don't have we don't have buttons either. So you have a, a bathrobe, full till the end, white, embroidered, type of till almost till the floor. And that's the second thing that you have, but you have a problem. It's not closed well. So how right, do you- You need a belt. You need a belt. So you see, you by doing it logically, you'll remember all of them. So you need a belt. So the second one is called Coutonet. And the third one is a belt. It's called what? Avnet, Avnet. You know how long is the Avnet? 32, you know, I you just know. heard this. It's something yes. like 32 amos or something. And yes. also yes. around the head, around the head, they put a turban, right? Yes, but okay, wait. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The avnet is 32 amot. If an ama is 50 centimeters, we are in Israel, we are not in America, and 50 <laughs> centimeters, and it's 32 amot, it's in between 40 and 60, depending on the shitot. If you have 16 uh, meters, it's pretty big. 50, 32 amot is about 60 meters. So ta, 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 ta. the gartel is a reminding of this. And now, mm. but now tell me, so we're up to three. Now tell me the kutonet is atoning for what? We said it the goes around the heart. What? It goes. It goes around the heart. That's the that's the belt. Yeah, the belt. Oh, okay. What do you What did you ask about what? The kutonet. <laughs> the kutonet. Oh, huh? the kutonet. What is it, machaper? Yes. It's a gemara, in two places. I took uh, in in. Uh, in Erchin, it's a small Gemara. Anybody remember? The Kutonet is Mechaper on Shfichut Damin. I am, and why? Because it says each time it's Yosef. because of Tukim or Chazal, because by Yosef, Vayit Belu et a Kutonet Badam. Interesting. Ah. Ah. I'm very happy from the A, but I personally am not satisfied. Because it's very nice. But if it doesn't have a deeper meaning, so what? So because there is a posuk here and a posuk there, we're spending the whole lesson saying that because there is Tarshish here and Tarshish there, so it's connected. Because this, because that, it has to be deeper. Hmm. But it's true that the brothers wanted to kill him. In the end, they didn't kill him. But the, the blood of a sheep resembles the most the blood of men. So they toiled the kutonet, and it's called kutonet in the text right, the, whatever, in, in blood, so that Yaakov should think that he's dead, okay? So it's mechaper on shfichut damin. Put it aside, we have to explain it, okay? Then we have the avnet, and the avnet is mechaper on bed thoughts. Like the what? korban olam. Bed thoughts. Oh, Here bad thoughts, is. okay. You don't even do the avera. In other okay. words, you're, you're, uh, you're dividing the body between the part which is like an angel and the part which is like an animal. And we spoke mm -hmm. last week from we spoke last week about in such a deep way, but we only mentioned it that if a person recognizes this is musr for a minute, if uh, it's not my musr, it's in the in the line of of the Balei Musar, that's what I mean. I don't say I'm giving Musar. It's in the line of Balei Musar. Rabbi Yerucham, who took everything from Rabbi Israel Salanter, I told you, used to say, and now let me take care of my zoo. Arshav ani etapel bagan chayot sheli. Oy vavoy, what a strong sentence. But that's how he used to say, meaning my needs like, <laughs> like animals, procreation, 
uh, uh, toilet, uh, give me another few things, needs, uh, uh, desires, uh, Eating. Food, food, everything. Food. Okay? And, and, but if a person recognizes that he's made from the earth, which is very earthy, which is very earthy, which is an Am Haaretz. Noah is called Isha Adama after he became drunk. Isha Adama, okay? But we'll see that it's not always like that. So it's very, very interesting because you have, you have a, a, a part, that man, and on the other hand, you have Vayipach Be'apav Nishmat Chayim, a shtikel of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the person, which is more like an angel. But the angel doesn't have both parts. That's why Hashem prefers men, because he made a very strange shidduch, in order that we should have to work on ourselves. But if we recognize mm -hmm. we have both, and we accept it, and when we make mistakes, we try again, instead of listening to the Yetzer Hara, to the Satan, to the Malach Amavet, they tell us, you'll never succeed, so don't try, because that's what he tries to do. But if we recognize that Sheva Yipol Tzadik Vekam, but if you don't fall, you can't get up again. So then you are never under the, on, in the hands of the Yetzirah. You understand? That's the Bale Musa. You have to recognize it. Once you recognize it, you can win it. You can vanquish it. It's very, very beautiful. Clear. So this is here, Chorea Vera. This is the, uh, the Avnet. And then, Rosiva, now you say what you wanted to say before. What the fourth clause, all white. It's the something. Turban. What? Something it's on the your turban, head. isn't it? It's... Right. Yeah. And it's called it's... by a Kohen, Hediot. It's called. Hediot. Mig... No, Hediot means a simple Kohen. It doesn't mean an idiot. It means a simple Kohen, not a Kohen Gadol. And by him, it's called a Migbaat, which was taken by the Israelis for the head of a yeshiva bocher, of a rabbi. And by the Kohen Gadol, it's called a mitznefet. And there are two different Mitz types of turban, but it's still the fourth clause. Okay? So the clothes of the Kohen Hediot are white, and the four first clothes of the Kohen Gadol, he never has the other clothes without these clothes. And sometimes on Yom Kippur, he has only these clothes because gold and, uh, and metal is not good because it reminds of the Egel. So en kategor mm. nasasta negor. From here, the custom of taking off one's jewelry on, on Yom Kippur. Some people take all jewelry off and some people take off the gold jewelry because mm -hmm. en kategor nasasta negor. That's why the shofar can't be from a cow because it's the Egel. Okay, can only be from a sheep or all kinds of that type of animal, okay? The hefer, it reminds, the shofar reminds of the, of, of the ram of Avram Avinu instead of Yitzhak, which is good, okay? These are the first four clothes. And what is the mikvaat or the mitznefet uh, atoning for? I don't know, maybe machshavos? I don't know. Gaiver. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's interesting because on one hand, we have to cover the head as an anover to remember that there is above us Hashem yes. who decides everything. And on the other hand, a migbat or a mitznefet are uh, atoning for gaiva. It's interesting. These are the mm -hmm. first four. Three of them are logical. And one of them we still don't understand. It's uh, uh, the... Um, uh, Good on it, okay? I mean, it's nice that Yosef, etc. but it's, we need to explain more. Now, what about the shoes of the Kohen? I think no. when they did the Avodah, they didn't wear shoes. Never. We explained the first four clothes. Now we explain the not clothes. We didn't explain it yet. The Kohen and the Kohen Gadol don't have shoes. Where do you think that the Muslim took it from. Yeah. That's why they the take off their shoes. They, you yeah, don't the, Kohanim went bare, the Kohanim went barefoot. The Muslims yes. wear socks. <laughs> the Kohanim and the Kohanim Gdoilim 
went barefoot and today remains from this only one thing that when they do the levy takes off his shoes to the Kohen. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, so be careful when you're if you're a Kohen, if you married a Kohen and you have children, they become 13, they should have socks without holes. Because when Shabbos, they have to take off their shoes, it's a busha if they have holes in their socks. Okay? But if nobody is a Kohen, so no problem. Just uh, for the joke. Anyway, this story of the shoes is fascinating. Yes? Because usually the shoes represent the mechitze between the earth, to be very earth, to be very materialistic, to be am ha'aretz, to be isha adama, and the person with the bob. And we spoke about this often as a, from the clothes of the soldier, of the soldiers now. Which part is the most expensive? The shoes. Because shoes, you very many people, you know, they go to a gmach when they don't have money and they'll buy and they'll get for two shekel, five shekel, whatever you want, some clothes for the children, no problem. You wash them and they look new and everything. But shoes, a lot of people want to give them new shoes and strong shoes and they'll put money in shoes so that you have a, a strong way of going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's a separation between the earth and the person. And more than that, it's as mm -hmm. well a sign of strength. You know, when you're well in your shoes, you're strong. When you are with um, heels that are like 10 inches, okay, so you fall. You know, the French, they go to weddings and I can't stop laughing. The wedding is on the second floor because there is a balcony. So they all take off their shoes in their hands and mm -hmm. go up the stairs barefoot and then they put back their shoes. They take off their shoes to dance <laughs> and then they put back their shoes because it's impossible to, to, to go with such shoes. Shoes have to be strong, have to be strong and it's a sign of strength. So when you take off your shoes, that's the other side, yeah? On one hand, it's as if you don't separate from the earth, but on the other hand, it's to show your vulnerability and that you're under mm -hmm. Hashem. Now we have another case for the shoes. We have Perek Gimel Pasuk Hei of Shmot, where Moshe Rabbeinu sees a snake. And he says, Asurana Vere, he sees something strange. So he says, oh, that's interesting. I have to go and look. I have to go and look. And you know what the Medrash says? When you say Asura, Sur Mira Asetov, Sur doesn't just mean stay away. It means stay away by turning another direction. Huh. It's very it's, nice. It's turning to and go. So Moshe Rabbeinu understands that if there is something strange, he has to learn something from it. So the Midrash says if he wouldn't have Sur Me, to see the snake, he wouldn't have been Moshe Rabbeinu. He wouldn't have heard Hashem. He wouldn't have heard the order of Hashem. If he wouldn't have turned, it's very interesting, but I have a question. It says in Pirkei Ovos, the Mishnah says, if somebody stops his learning and goes and sees Ma Na'e Ilan ze, how beautiful is this tree of nature, is Mitrayev Benafsho. It's very, very bad for him what he did. So how does it fit with Moshe who turns around? Who knows? Was I Moshe guess. learning at the time? Be beautiful, beautiful. The answer is in the middle of learning, you can't. But when you are in the world, you get messages from, you know, Rabbi Yisachar Brand having a book, listen to your messages. We have to listen to our messages. But at the time of learning, the message is in the learning. That's what the Mishnah means. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, uh, there was a parenthesis. But anyway, so he turns. And then he hears a voice from the angel, from the from Hashem, from at the time of the bush, and he says, "Shal uh, ne'alecha because this place is kodosh. So it fits exactly mm. with what we said. The shoes to separate from the earth, from from mm. from the material, from the earth. But when the earth is kodosh, because Hakadosh Baruch Hu is there, then well. you take off the shoe and you don't have a mechitz. So it still fits with the fact that you have to be totally on of. I'm nothing. I'm Ayn and Hashem is everything. And you have to as well not separate yourself from the earth. Moshe Rabbeinu is on a madrig that can be without shoes and be and suck from the kedusha of the place where Hashem is. 
So when we live in Eretz, when we live in Eretz Israel, the Eretz is Kadosh. Everywhere we go is Kadosh, right? So yeah. we're absorbing all that all the time. You go to New York, you don't. Is that yeah. what you're saying? The whole land saying, is Kadosh. Yes. Yes, I say we we absorbing. When Rav Dessler arrived in Eretz Israel, he was shocked to realize that he is suddenly understanding things in learning that he worked for for years and did not mm-hmm. understand. And he writes it in the book. Well, but but why don't we go barefoot? Because we're not on the madrega. We wouldn't. <laughs> it would just hurt our feet. We wouldn't be on the madrega. Right. Stuck the kedusha of the earth with our feet. Okay, and who knows if all the earth is still so kodosh or if some things manage to make it less. But anyway, but look. Right, but one minute, because um, Yehoshua had to take off one shoe, I think. Exactly. But I forgot what the reason. At the end of Perek Hay, very end of Perek Hay of Yehoshua, Yehoshua sees somebody and he tells him, are you our friend? Or are you from our enemies? It's a night before Yericho. And it's an angel of Hashem. And he's telling him, you have to learn the whole night. You're not learning. Uh, the preparation to war is not by eating steak, sleeping a lot, and eating those sukariot, you know, that make you excited. The, the way to prepare for war at the level of Yeshua is to learn Torah. But I don't understand. If that's the case, why did he appear looking like a general of army and not like a Rosh Hashiva? The big question. Mm. And that man that appeared to him and was an angel to give him Musser looked like a general of army and not like a Rosh Hashiva. And the message was you have to learn. Mm. The answer is Atem Tacharishun, meaning the beginning of the Pasuk, Hashem Ish Milchama. God will make the war. That's why the angel looks like a general of army. Leave it to me. And you, you keep quiet. And this is what happened with Yericho. Once they took Yericho as their own, they had the tragedy of Ha'ai. But if they understand that it's from Hashem, it's something else. Beautiful. But that was again a parenthesis. Getting back to the shoes. By Yoshua, there is no Yud. It doesn't say shal na'alecha me'al raglecha, it says shal ne'alcha me'al raglecha. Ne'alcha mean one shoes, means one shoe. Because Yoshua is not on the level of Moshe. He is the moon and Moshe is the sun. He receives from Moshe only. He's not himself Moshe, a source. He's receiving like the moon receives from the sun. So he can have some of the Kedusha. But it only says shal ne'alcha me'al raglecha. If you want to understand it on a more uh, Kabbalistic level, you look there in Perek Gimel, Pasuk Hei, in Shmot, the Malbim. And then he explains it in depth, and the Shom the Guf, I tell you the truth, I don't fully understand it. So those that are interested, you can look Perek Gimel, Pasuk Hei, in Shemot, the Malbim. Okay? But it's using Kabbalah. Okay? Now I'm going back. That's the shoes that we don't have by the Kohen or the Kohen Gadol. When you see pictures of them, you see that they never have shoes. So somebody asked if they have socks. I don't think so. I don't think they have socks because they have the contact directly. Okay? Now we get to the clothes of the Kohen Gadol. What's the next thing that the Kohen Gadol has? Now it's colorful and it's uh, with gold and and, uh, diamonds and everything you want and stones. What is what are the, the clothes F-O-D. of the Kohen Gadol? Effort. Who said the effort? The effort is the meil. Maybe first the meil. Doesn't he wear effort? Meil. Meil first, and then the effort is on the meil. Beautiful. The if the meil is blue, is trellet. And remember, every time you see that a light blue, Nachon, I'm sure we, you think of the throne of glory, right? Every time you see blue. When you buy a jumper which is blue, it's because you think that you want to think of the throne of glory of Hashem, Nachon? I'm sure. All of us, right? I'm making a joke. <laughs> Not <No>? really? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Okay. So oh. what does it say? It says, because trelet dome la yam, the yam dome la rakia, 
אל רקיע דומה לכתבי הכבוד. So זה מעיל, אבל זה כהן גדול, is to make us look up to שמיים, like, you know, משה רבינו with his hands up, but it's not the hands of משה, it's the fact that we're looking up, but it's deeper, and it's so beautiful. I began the class speaking about the fact that a person is a person of associations when we spoke about music. And what it's teaching us, because Trelet Domela Yam, the Yam Domela Rakia, the Rakia Domela Kisea Kavod, is to remind us that we are people of associations. And therefore, when in the Shema it says, Sometimes you see something which is not the end of the world, but it can remind you of something which is more the end of the world and more the end of the world. And therefore, we have to make uh, limits and gdarim and, and be very careful. It's to teach you that, you understand, the whole Gemara, the whole oral law is based on those associations. When you read the text, the, the written law, it's not associative. You have a story, another story, it's paragraphs. But the oral law, a person thinks of something, ah, but this reminds him of something, and begins explaining the other thing. Look at my shiur. Five times I said already a, a parenthesis because it made me explain another thing and another thing. That he, because this reminds of the, of the sea, which reminds of the sky, which reminds of, of the kisya kabod, like the memorial. You understand? That's oral law. That's the difference between written law and oral law. That's why you have to edit. When you just write a book based on tapes of a shiur, it's not good. It might remind you of the shiurim of the person, but in the book it's not because one repeats the same thing because it has to be repeated, etc. And in a, in a written form, it's different. The written form is not the way we live. The oral law is full of, of dynamic of life. Do you understand the difference? It's very interesting. It's totally differently written because it wasn't meant to be written. It was meant to be taught orally, but at some point it had mm -hmm. to be written if it would have been forgotten. I'm just explaining you how it's functioning, how it's written, how it's made, okay? So, so the me'il, the me how does the me'il look? You know how the me'il looks? It's like a big uh, Arbakan fort, a big city. It's a huge, wide piece of material with a hole in the middle and you pass it and it's yes. in the front like a pinafore dress you know it's in the front right. and in the back it's not like a pinafore dress because it's not sewn on the sides and uh -huh. because it's not sewn, and on the bottom it has as you know the bells and the pomegranates so when the Kohen goes around one hears him He can't go without being heard. Ding, 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 ding. Like the cows in Switzerland. Why do they have uh, a bell? <laughs> that they shouldn't be lost in, you can in find the, forgotten in the field. Mountain. That one knows that they didn't come back. Right. Some of them didn't come back. Why is it so? Because the Kohen represents as what's new. And when you enter, you know, we need new in space and in... Uh, and in, in hearing as well. In other words, if I'm in my room and you enter without knocking, I can be shocked. It's not Sanua. A person needs Arba Amot. He needs a little space around him. Well, you know, even for Shmona Esre, it's not good when shoes are very, very full from this point, because you don't even have time to daven for yourself. It's too, 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 too squashed. But the other idea is that a person needs to just be prepared a minute before you enter the room of somebody else, you knock, you understand? That's snoot. So the bell makes that the Kohen Gadol can't enter anywhere without being heard before. And what is it referring to? What is it atoning for? for? Everybody knows. Lashonara. Lashonara, because the Gemara says, Yavo davar shebekol, Something that makes noise, ding, 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 is a kapore for gossip, speaking, speaking too much, not being silent. You understand? Okay? That's a me'il. And then we have a problem. There is a huge wind. So what happens to the me'il? Because it's in it the front and it's not sewn, so pshu, pshu, it goes 
it needs what? Again, like the cutonet. A belt. A belt. But we don't take the belt of the avnet, which was for the cutonet. We don't take it off. We could and put it on everything. We don't. We use the ephod. And there is never an ephod mentioned without, ah. when we speak about the clothes of the Kohen Gadol, there is never a mentioned uh, an ephod mentioned without the Hoshen. They're always together. So the ephod is like a, an apron, which you close, and it closes naturally the me'il. And on it, with rings, metal rings, or golden rings, depends, all kinds of, uh, I, go to, I don't go into all the details, the, the, the rings uh, are going to attach with the Hoshen. They're always attached together. And the Hoshen is a breastplate. And what it is, it's, it would hurt if it would be directly the breastplate. So it's like a double thing. It's like if you see, my book has, you know, it has the two sides of the book. This part, the top part is uh, metal, but the bottom part is material. And then you, you close it, and the part against your breast is, is material. And only the external part is uh, metal with holes where the beautiful stones of every, type are, of every tribe are. And you have as well stones here by the shoulders and you have stones under the, the Hoshen, etc. And the Hoshen is called Hoshen Mishpat. And the first one that ever used it was Aharon. Aaron Cohen, who became Cohen Gadol. So the ephod is mechaper on Avodah Zarah. In the Tanakh, we have many times ephod connected with Avodah Zarah. You know, they made an ephod and they made a statue with an ephod and an ephod. So it's Avodah Zarah. And we always have to have an atonement for Avodah Zarah because Avodah Zarah is so broad, so broad. And a guy, if he has a little bit of Avodah Zarah with him, it's called Avodah Zarah B'Shituf. It's not the end of the world, as long as he believes as well in Hashem. By us, there is no as well. It has to be Hashem and mm. only, 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 only Hashem. So we need the Kapore, the atonement of the Avodah Zarah. And the Choshen is called Choshen Mishpat because the, uh, wait, wait, because the Choshen represents the emes, the, the, the judgment, the straightness. Bereshis is called Sefer Hayashar, not Sefer Hasidim and not Sefer Tzadikim. The Sefer Hayashar, and I have news for you. The first question will be asked, going back to the Shura the other week, about Gneva and all, in all kinds of ways. We will not be asked if we waited for Mashiach enough as a first question. We will not be asked if we are men, if we learn Torah all the time, as a first question. The first question will be, have we been straight in our business with people lying, stealing, forgetting to give back, not giving back on time? Frightening. Frightening. Choshen Mishpat. And it says in the Torah, when there is Mishpat, and that's why in Shemona Esre we daven so much for, for Mishpat, we say we... Uh, uh, Absolutely, you understand. Um, uh, there is a very, very famous story about a guy that says, I don't understand the Torah speaks about such low people. It says that Hashochad Yaver Enechachamim, that Shochad will, uh, how do you say Shochad in English? Uh, bribery, bribery, bribery. The slightest bri bribery will make that a person can't be a proper judge anymore. I am a judge, the guy said to a rabbi. He said, "I am a judge, uh, a judge." And you think that because I got a present from somebody, I'm not going to be 100% straight in my judgment? And the rabbi answered him, "Exactly, exactly. You are such a an animal." that you don't have any hakaratatov. And that's why you won't be bribed by the person. But if a person gave you a present and you have hakaratatov, then you're bribed. Isn't it a strong answer? In your case, if you are not 
bribed by the person is because you don't have gratitude. Okay, in other words, when we have gratitude, we are bribed. We're bribed by everything. We're bribed by everything. To get into a school, the one that looks better will be naturally have more chance. And it has nothing to do with, with the rest. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes one catches oneself and everything, but that's why. And you know who is the biggest briber in the eyes of a person, okay? So Aaron Cohen is a person who is the most straight that exists. And not only this, but his heart is pure. And the Hoshen is on the heart. And that's why he deserved to have the Hoshen because when Moshe Rabbeinu became the leader and Aaron had done all the dirty work for so many years and Moshe disappeared because he had to run away and Aaron had to deal with the people and do all the, all the hard work and he was so happy that his brother got the job. The 28-year-old girl is dancing at the wedding of her sister, 22, who is getting married with a guy, 29. So she could have married him as well because she's 28. It's not that the guy is 22, then she, it doesn't come into question, but he's 29, so she could have had him. And she's so fully happy of her sister. That's a schus, that's Aaron Cohen. You understand? So that's the Hoshen. And finally, what do we have? We have the tzitz. And the tzitz is gold, Kodesh Lashem. And you know what it is? It's called Azus Metzach. Azus Metzach is a type of gaiver which is, which is chutzpah. Yeah, the chutzpah of the forehead, Azus Metzach. Have a az kanamer. Sometimes we have to have chutzpah for Yiddishkeit. But in general, so it's, there are two types of gaiver, and that's Azus Metzach. Rashi, who lived in France, called, it's fascinating, the word in French of chutzpah, how do you say chutzpah in English? In English, you can say gall, nerve, gall. Nerve. nerve. You have nerve, huh? you have nerve or something. In French, you use the word forehead. Ah. And the tzitz is in the forehead, effronterie. Rashi brought it into the French language. Chutzpah of the forehead. That's what it's called in French. Because the tzitz is, and in Hebrew, in Lashon Kodesh is azut metzach interesting so we I, I didn't realize how it's already after the time but it's fascinating we did not explain uh, next week you remind me please to explain um, uh, the kutonet it's the most fascinating one why should the the everything you know we have things where it's easy you know that the head or the or the thing on the forehead is is chutzpah i understand that the Mirnasaim are erva, I understand, but that the Kutonet, because Vayat et a Kutonet, Padam, what's going on? And it will make us understand not just Yosef, but the Kohen Gadol. And now, when you'll see Mirta Hashem, when Mashiach comes today, and we'll see, and suddenly the temple, which is already built, will come down, and we'll have people like the Chovetz Chaim that know the Halochas and are going to be Kohanim, and I don't know where the clothes will come, I hope from Shamaim or whatever, we'll know what we have to be thinking of, because just to see, I used to, from the time I'm a kid, somebody who didn't see a Kohen Gadol, big deal. But if you understand that they represent something, for example, the coat, the, the me'il, in length, it explained Psukim that there was a hem made here. No, not just cut. Today, you don't even hem, have hems on the skirt. You just cut. It's crazy. Everything, you know, easy come, easy go. But why? Because it represents the lips. So that's why it has this, because it's connected Lashonara. And everything has reasons, you understand? So next week, remind me to just finish. I could not resist. I thought it would go faster, but I could not resist to show you how Megillat Esther falls always, usually when it's not a double year, you understand? Around the times of Truma. I could do the same with Parashat Truma, but we didn't do it last week. But with, at least with Parashat Tetzave. Okay, so we'll do next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very yes. much. All the best.